If you want to pack on muscle while maintaining a slim and aesthetic midsection, you need to be careful with squats and deadlifts. Progressively overloading these movements might be effective for adding size to your back and legs, but it'll also thicken up your waistline, leading to a wider, blockier appearance. At least that's what some people might tell you, and this is actually a pretty common piece of conventional bodybuilding advice that's been floating around for many years, but is there any truth to it? Let's break it down. So first off, it is true that squats and deadlifts will add size to your spinal erectors, which are basically these big columns of muscle that run up and down your back and are technically part of your midsection. They'll be working mostly isometrically to prevent your trunk from collapsing forward, but as you get stronger over time and work up to heavier and heavier weights, no doubt you are going to see spinal erector growth from these movements. However, in terms of overall width or thickness, this isn't going to take anything away aesthetically, and really it's just going to give your back a more impressive look overall. Those muscles can only be seen from the side and rear view, and so they won't contribute to any sort of overly thick or chunky appearance as far as your waistline is concerned. When most people talk about squats and deadlifts leading to a thick your waist, usually they're referring to the rectus abdominis or the six pack muscles, along with the obliques. And yes, those muscles will be active during squats and deadlifts. However, they mostly play a stabilizing role to counter that pull from the spinal erectors and increase overall core stability. Keep in mind that just because a muscle is active doesn't mean that it's being placed under significant mechanical tension. And since the abs and obliques aren't working directly against the load during these exercises, they aren't going to experience significant hypertrophy from them. And it also likely won't be any more than what you'd get during other basic standard compound lifts like overhead presses or pull-ups or rows where those muscles are also acting as a stabilizer. And even more importantly, it's going to be far less of a growth stimulus than what you'd get from actual direct ab and oblique exercises, whether it's weighted crunches or leg raises or reverse crunches, rotational movements, those core focused lifts will be directly lengthening and shortening the abs and obliques against the resistance. And so from a hypertrophy standpoint, the effect there is going to be much more significant. So if the argument is to avoid squats and deadlifts out of fear that they're going to expand your waistline and build these massive abs and obliques, then by that logic, you'd also need to avoid any big basic compound lift in general and all direct ab and oblique training as well. I mean, when was the last time you saw someone perform crunches and cable twists in their program and end up with a gigantic bulging midsection as a result? It just doesn't happen because those muscles only have a limited potential for growth in the first place. And even if they do hypertrophy, it's not going to give you an overly wide or thick looking waist. It's just going to make them slightly more developed and get them popping a bit more noticeably, assuming your body fat levels are low enough for them to be visible. The only argument you could possibly make would be that if for some reason you were doing a very high volume of direct oblique exercises, and maybe your genetics are such that those muscles respond really well to training or are already a bit bigger to begin with, then maybe that could add a bit of unwanted width from the front view. But I don't know too many people who are performing a huge number of sets specifically for their obliques or why you'd even want to do that in the first place. So usually that's not going to be a concern. The one other argument is that squats and deadlifts widen your waist by stretching the abdominal wall outward due to that core bracing that's involved. However, you're not maximally expanding and stretching the abdominal wall in that case. And even if you were, it doesn't mean it's going to become permanently larger. So I wouldn't say that's a very convincing argument either. When it all comes down to it, growth hormone abuse aside, Good morning, Primal. the real cause for a thicker, wider looking waist is due to two main factors. The first is going to be basic structural genetics. Some people just have a wider waist in general because that's how their skeleton is shaped. And there's really nothing you can do about that aside from extreme methods that definitely aren't recommended. And then secondly, it's a simple matter of body fat levels, more body fat, bigger waist, less body fat, smaller waist, quite obviously. And there's a genetic component involved there as well, because different people have different body fat distributions, and some people just naturally allocate a higher percentage of fat toward their midsection versus other areas. When people say that squats and deadlifts gave them a thicker waist, most likely there's just some kind of false correlation going on there. Maybe people who start taking squats and deadlifts very seriously are on average more likely to be bulking, in which case it might seem like those exercises led to a bigger waist, when in reality it's just the extra food volume, fat storage, and water weight. Maybe people who are more likely to excel at powerlifting are those with a bigger bone structure in general, or there could be just some kind of basic placebo action going on there as well. I mean, keep in mind that there are still people out there buying turkesterone every month and swearing up and down over its amazing muscle building benefits. So really anything is possible. If you want some more help getting your overall fitness program onto the right track, make sure to visit seannell.com custom. Just fill out the short form on that page and I'll send you back a free step-by-step -step training plan based on your current condition and goals, along with an easy to follow nutrition plan as well. The link for that is in the description. Here are two more videos I'd recommend watching now. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on future videos. Thanks for watching guys. And I'll talk to you again soon.